Hello everybody and welcome to another ranking video. I am Sanjita and today I am going over the best marquee characters and ships of 2019. Uh, now 2019 was kind of a down year in terms of character releases. There are only 8 total uh, and there are also 5 ships released in kind of a marquee way. Uh, so less to go on, but I think that's because they were recovering from 2018, or letting people recover from 2018, the Galaxy of Marquis, where there's like 30 characters and ships. So next video will be a lot longer. Uh, without further ado, let's get into it. And first off, for 2019, we have a ship, and that is the Emperor Shuttle. Uh, the Emperor Shuttle is seeing some use for me personally, countering profundity, although it's not 100% counter. Uh, it does work, um, because it provides kind of a houndstooth-like Benefit to Empire allies, Empire and Sith allies, by granting protection up when they're critically hit, which is happening a lot in small hits on that Profundity team. Uh, it can also clear debuffs from an ally, though that attack is on cooldown, and it also inflicts uh, buff immunity and dispels buffs from the enemy. I think that's more why it's on cooldown. Um, and it can also force a taunt on the strongest ally, and it does a surprising amount of damage uh, for support ship, I think its special attack is like over 20,000 when it's decently relicked. Uh, but decently strong tip ship uh, mid B tier. Next up, we got the first character of 2019 from February, and it is B1 Battle Droid. Uh, B1 Battle Droid has a very creative kit. Um, to my knowledge, it was the first character that which is just comes out in stacks, and it only has one HP, one hit point. Um, but it does a lot for the Separatist Droid team. It acts as a medic with its AOE. It's constantly assisting. It's gaining turn meter when its allies are attacking, um, and it grants offense and uh, offense to all its allies, and then gains tenacity and critical avoidance uh, to all allies as well. Uh, well, actually, offense just to itself, but critical avoidance and tenacity to all allies, it doesn't have much use for uh, tenacity and critical avoidance with 1 HP. Uh, but very strong character, high B tier. Um, I consider it one of the better characters in the General Grievous lineup. Next character, also from February 2019, we got Droidica. Uh, to me, Droidica is C tier for a marquee. Uh, on paper, he looks pretty good with the damage immunity. He has increased speed when he's not in damage immunity, and then he soaks up those hits throws it back out as many times as he's been hit. Uh, but he doesn't have as much use right now. A lot of times in a Grievous team, your fifth, you kind of kick out Jordica to use BB-8 or Newt or something, or even Watt in certain situations, um, like Conquest. Um, but uh, he, yeah, he doesn't have as much use. He can't even go on a shorty team. Um, he's very necessary in territory battle on that Duke mission in P4. Uh, so he sees more use in TB. Uh, he doesn't really do anything to speak of in raids. Uh, C tier for Droidica. Next up from March 2019, we have another ship. And it is the Ebon Hawk. Uh, now I put Ebon Hawk in C tier, and I could see a complaint that, like, okay, it's huge in countering Executor. Uh, why is it C? Uh, it's just a very situational ship. Before that, it's basically just on duty as reinforcement to get a d dispel once in a while. Uh, but it can only do that once. And then the only reason it's really good in countering Executor is that uh, Chaff, or Chaff, I don't know how you say that uh, buff, that gives it out to all allies and can prevent the Executor from getting its contract off. Um, but otherwise, it's not that strong. It doesn't do a lot of damage. It can dispel from one target with its first special and inflict buff immunity with its second special. Uh, but it's very situational and, in my mind, mainly just used for that counter or cleanup buffs. Now jumping to June 2019, we've got another character, and it is her first A tier and top of A tier in Shock T. Uh, I put Shock T in A tier because she's just such a strong leader. Um, she can go well with 501st clones and even Bad Batch situationally as a fifth and not the leader. Uh, but she calls all clone allies to assist. She grants 100% turn meter. She does cleanse. She heals up allies, uh, and she calls them to assist even uh, as a single target on her second special. Her lead is great, extra speed, protection recovery, extra stats, 15% max health, 5% max, uh, max protection, 15% offense. Um, whenever clones take damage, she gets 20% turn meter, and she's already a super fast character. Um, and she grants out retribution to her whole team as long as they're clones. And offense up and cleanse on the basic. Very strong. The only thing she doesn't do is deal a lot of damage. Uh, but high A tier for me. All right, next up from June 2019, and I'm kind of fudging the rules a little bit, uh, but it's Giannosian Brute Alpha, and he is in the A tier. Uh, now, he wasn't technically a marquee. He was directly released to Cantina, but I see that as a charitable marquee release, and he sh is on par with other marquee characters. 
Plays A tier because of his plug and play viability. He has a strong leader, uh, healing up Geonosian allies, resummoning his brute when it's dead, um, equalizing health protection. He's a great leader for Geonosians, uh, but Geonosians are one of the weaker factions in the game right now. Uh, they can't do as much as they did when they came out. There's just way too many ways to counter them. Uh, but he also has an AoE dispel. He can dispel on hit or AoE clit. Yeah, dispel. He can dispel on his basic if he crits. Uh, but the biggest thing for him is his plug-and-play viability, because he's basically a double character, including a tank that can come back. Uh, so he's key in countering JMK with uh, Sith Eternal Emperor and such. Uh, and you can use him in a lot of different ways, just when you need a tank to really take a big hit right at the beginning. Next we got another ship from August 2019, and that is the Vulture Droid. Um, and in ranking at low B tier, I am considering like the swarm of Vulture Droids that you get with Malevolence. Uh, the Vulture Joy itself is kind of weak because it dies pretty fast. Uh, it's meant to die, it's meant to speed up the capital ship. Uh, but calling assists and dealing out Vulture Droids is pretty strong, and it's what allows a lot of uh, the Malevolence uh, team to work, and that's the main feature of it primarily. Um, so even though the ship is kind of weak and kind of dies pretty fast, uh, I put it B tier. I can also inflict buff immunity if you're lucky, um, but the biggest thing is just assisting and dealing out Buzz Droids. Next we got the counterpart to the Vulture Droid in November 2019, the Hyena Bomber. Now the Hyena Bomber is definitely an A tier ship for me. Um, it really makes the Malevolence team go. I can ignore Taunt, deals out Buzz Droids uh, in an AoE, which gets the whole team going. It's a great tank, it can just take so many hits, um, but without it, that Malevolence team can't do nearly as much as it does. Uh, and this, this uh, is a key mechanic in the Executor counter with the Malevolence. It's a very strong ship. It's mostly just tanky, uh, but the dealing out bunch droids and avoiding uh, taunt is super useful, especially when you call a bunch of other vulture droids to assist when you avoid that taunt. And now our last ship of 2019 came out a couple weeks after Hyena, and that's the uh, BLT Y-Wing. Um, now it makes sense that it's B tier because it has so many Bs in its name. Uh, but for me, it doesn't go to A tier because as a tank, it mainly just sits there. Uh, I mean, it gets an extra taunt when someone triggers unending loyalty, um, but it doesn't do much other than just take hits. And it does do that well on a Galactic Republic team. Uh, this came in and replaced the need for the Houndstooth. Uh, the best thing it can do offensively is if you're doing a mirror match and the Anakin uh, died with healing immunity and then triggered its stealth savior mechanic, this can kill it with its special by uh, attacking the weakest unit and dispelling their protection up. Otherwise, it doesn't really do anything as an offensive ship. Uh, next, from November 2019, we got Arc Trooper. An Arc Trooper is just like GBA. He came out right to Cantina, just kind of as a mercy. He's needed for light side TB. Um, he's in mid-low B tier for me. I could even see him being in C tier. Uh, but he does do a lot of damage. He does the cleanse with his turret. Not cleanse, uh, dispel. He's always assisting, he's always doing extra damage with that turret, and he can give it out to another clone. Uh, I like to give it to Fives, because Fives is getting all the turn meter from the clones being hit. Uh, but he's decent, he's a support character, he's in five of her, or he's an attacker, but he's a supporting role player. Um, low B, I can see him in C. Alright, next up from December 2019, we've got Hux. And Hux would be higher if they didn't nerf his Zeta. Uh, because his Zeta prevents Termina gain on all enemies in a First Order team, but when he came out, he didn't require First Order. Uh, so he allowed the Sith Empire to beat uh, Gas 5 at first, which was the meta at the time, and they didn't let that stand. Um, he's interesting. He's the only character they can get to Gear 12 without being 7 stars, uh, but that was just an oversight. Uh, but he's a strong First Order supporting character, grants out bonus turns, calls everyone to assist, Gets a lot of turn meter himself, which is bad under Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. Uh, but getting advantages at the beginning of the match is what makes a uh, full first door Supreme Leader Kylo Ren team work. Uh, because they basically have crit immunity and their tanks are taunting and support gets turn meter and all that. Uh, but strong character, low A tier. Hello there. Like and subscribe. Next up, we got Sith Trooper, uh, Hux's buddy. Uh, and for me, he goes in higher A tier behind Shock T. Uh, he's he's very flexible. He does a lot of damage. He's Sith in First Order, though he does mostly get used with First Order. He's constantly assisting when a First Order Sith ally critically hits. 
Um, he gets mad and takes bonus turns, kind of like Anakin when his allies die off. Uh, but he's not as good as Anakin in that regard because they have to die, not just fall under 50% health. Um, he can cleanse his team and grant an advantage up, uh, but mainly he's very high just because he does so much damage on his own with assists and those AoEs. And the last marquee of 2019 was Resistance Hero Finn. Uh, and I think Resistance Hero Finn is actually a very strong resistance character. He has like a mini leadership ability in that he lets his whole team uh, counterattack while he's inspired. He cleanses the whole team while calling everyone to assist um, and can actually heal up, well not everyone, just attackers. And if you have support allies, they can heal up the team. Um, he does decent damage. Swapping turn meter while doing damage is a great move as well. Uh, so I, I just like him as a resistance character. He's one of the few very strong resistance characters. Um, it, it's a kind of top heavy, weak overall faction, uh, aside from the Galactic Legend. but. Great character, very strong, mid A tier. Uh, so that's it for 2019. Thanks for watching. Uh, next up is 2018, which is a way more sizable class of characters. Uh, 2018 was known as the Galaxy Marquis. So it might take more time for me to do that one. But uh, just keep an eye out. Thanks for watching. This is Sanji.